The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the soon from the noise. We're ending out day two of two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage with myself and Paul Gillen. Uh, 10 to 6.30 every day. Um, just, we'll take as much as we can just to get the data, share that with you, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. My co-host, Paul Gillen. And our special guest, Holger Mueller, Mueller from Constellation Research Analyst. Uh, covering the space, Ray Wang was here earlier, you've been here for the duration. Um, we're going to break down the event, we'll do a wrap up here. Uh, we have huge uh, impact event for 9,000 people. Uh, Paul, I want to go to you first and get your take on just the past two days, and we got a lot of Kool-Aid injection, attempts for Kool-Aid injection, but IBM people were very, very candid. I mean, I didn't find it uh, very uh, forceful at all from IBM. They're pragmatic. Uh, what's your thoughts on the event? I, I think pragmatism is is uh, what I take away, John. I think that's a good that's a good word for it. Uh, what I saw was a uh, uh, not a blockbuster. Uh, there was not a lot of of, uh, of hype and, and overstatement about what the company is doing. I was impressed with Steve Mills with our interview with him yesterday. We asked about blockbuster acquisitions, and he said basically, why? Why? I mean, why should we take on a, a big acquisition? that is going to create a headache uh, for us in, in, uh, in integrating into the organization. Let's focus on the spots where we have gaps and let's fill those. And that's really what they've, you know, they really have put their money where their mouth is in doing these 150 or more acquisitions over the last uh, three or four years. Um, I, I think that the, the, the one question that I would have, I don't think there's any doubt about IBM's commitment to cloud as the future, about their investment in big data analytics. They certainly have put their money where their mouth is there, over $25 billion invested in big data analytics. One question I have coming out of this conference is about power and about the decision to exit the x86 market and really create confusion in, uh, on the part of their business partners, their customers about, about how they're going to fill that gap and where they're going to go for their x86 needs. And the power clearly, power uh, eight clearly is the, the future. It's the, uh, it'll fill that role in the IBM portfolio, but they've got to act fast. So you think, do you think there's a ripple effect then? So that, that move obviously caused a ripple effect in their ecosystem. Well, I, I was talking to, uh, I, I've talked to two IBM partners today, fairly large IBM partners, and both of them have stressed that their customers are suffering some whiplash right now because all of a sudden, the x86 option from IBM has gone away. And so it's frozen their, their purchasing process. So some of them are going to HP, some of them are looking at other providers. Um, I don't think IBM really has, has uh, uh, told a coherent story to the market yet about how... Uh, and how power's new, so they got to prop that up. So, you, so you're saying, it's, okay, HP's going to get some new sales out of this, so frozen the market for IBM, and yet the power story's probably not clear. Is that what you're hearing? I don't think the power story is clear. I mean, certainly it was news to me that IBM is taking on Intel at, the, at this event, and I, I was surprised that, that 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 was a surprise. <laughs> Holger, I got to go to you because we, we've been sitting here at theCUBE and we've been having all the execs come here and, and we've been getting briefed here in theCUBE, sharing that with the audience. You've been out on the ground. It's, we've bumping into you guys with all the other analysts and all the briefings. You've been in the private sessions. Um, you've been in the rooms. You've been, you've been, you've been out, uh, in, out in the, uh, the trenches there. What, have you, what are you finding? What have you been hearing? And what are the, some of the sound bites that you can share with the audience? Well, it's not the classic IBM anymore. What a difference a year now. As a joke, I asked the executives in Cloud Panel, can you give me your body language if you had impact one year ago? Because they didn't have software at the time. They were not uh, in any way actionable to do something in Cloud. What a difference. Everything's running in software, everything's aligned. But I agree with what you said before, is that the messaging isn't, isn't right. Uh, and they don't tell customers, here's where we are right now, take you by the hand, this is where we're going to go. And that's something IBM has to improve. To you mentioned going. software, it's very interesting. I mean, Consider IBM uh, finalized the acquisition only last July. It's only been nine months since, since uh, was, uh, was acquired. And everything is software. Now it leads me to think of who acquired who. You know, did, did IBM acquire software, or did software actually acquire IBM? Because it seems that software is so strategic to IBM's cloud strategy going forward. 
very strategic for that. And I think it's probably why you know RBM is a long time. It's the most transformative single acquisition IBM has done. Right? I was at Connections in Germany and Orlando, and people were saying you could do that on our software. The answer was also put in software. So I've never seen IBM that line around a single thing around that. But they had the Bluemix in the house seven, eight weeks ago. It's moving very, very fast. What do you think about the social business? Is that hanging together? Is that story hanging? It's obviously relevant direction. It's kind of a smarter planet positioning. Certainly businesses will be social. Are you seeing any meat on the bone there, on the collaboration side? They're working on it. It's probably the biggest part of the whole story, right? They have to rebuild again, notes again. Email is new, collaboration is new. So it's quite a way to go there. Uh, they also have a vision on the HTML transactional side, right? They have a new social suite. For HR, which they just position with stuff completely at completely on talent management side, but it's definitely something which gives a differentiation to IBM. I have to say, John, I was struck by the lack of discussion of social business in the opening keynote in particular. Yep. Uh, of mobile, mobile big data, uh, I mean, that, that came across very clearly, but I've been accustomed to hearing that the social business drumbeat, and it didn't, it didn't come out of this conference. Yeah, I mean, my take, Paul, on that was is that I think this, it's pretty light. I don't think there's a lot of meat on the bone with the social, and I'll tell you why. I think it's like, it's like the destination everyone wants to go to, but there's no really engine yet, right? I think there's a lot of bicycle riding when they need a car, right? So the infrastructure is just not, is, is too uh, uh, embryonic, if you will. A lot of manual stuff going on, even the analytics, and you know, you're seeing on the leaderboard here on the social media side and big data analytics. Certainly the, there are some core uh, engine parts around IBM, but that, that social engine, I just don't see it happening. It requires a new kind of automation. It's got some real times. But I think that this is some, some nice bright spots. I love the streams. I love this zones concept that we heard from Watson Foundations. I think that is something that they, they need to pull out of the, the war chest there and bring that front and center. I think the thinking about data as zones is really compelling. And then obviously mobile, they got all the messaging on that. And to give IBM the benefit of the doubt, I mean, they have a story now that they have a revenue generating story with cloud and with big data, and social was never a revenue generating story. That's a software story, it's not big, it's not big dollars, and they've got something now that really, that really can drive uh, sales. I'll tell you, Kristen uh, from, from Mobile First, she was very impressive, and, and I'll tell you, social is being worked on, So, I, but the people are getting it. I mean, IBM 100% gets social. I think the, the, it's not a gimmick to them, it's not like, oh, we got some social media stuff. I think in the DNA of their soul, they, they come from that background Absolutely. of social. So I give them high marks on that. I just don't see the engine yet. And I'm looking for analytics, I'm looking for a couple, eight cylinders, I just don't see it yet. But we know the engine, right? The engine is Bluemix, right? If you want to build your next generation application, you've heard big data, yeah. you've tons of mobile at this show, you need something around analytics, which you have quite a lot to, and you need social. I'm, the, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical on Bluemix. I'll tell you why. Um, I'm not skeptical. I shouldn't say that. It's going to come and get some plain mail for that. Okay, I'll say it. I'll, if it's out there. I'll say it. The, I'm skeptical about Bluemix because it could be a Wright brother situation. Okay, the wrong guys building the wrong airplanes. So the question is, they might be on the wrong side of history if they don't watch the open source foundations. Because here's the problem we have with Bluemix. It's rushed to the market. Certainly, IBM's got muscle to put solutions together. No doubt. Betting on Cloud Foundry is really a risk. And although people are pumping it up and it's got some momentum, they don't have a big community. They have a lot of marketing behind it, and I know James Waters over there is doing a great job, and um, Josh McKinty over there with Piston Cloud behind it. It has all the elements of open collaboration and architecture collaboration. However, it's not a done deal yet in my mind. So that's a that is a risk factor in my my mind. We've got a number of maybe maybe you can help to 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 put these in order. A uh, number of new concepts out there. We've got Bluemix, the the uh, we've got SoftLayer, and we've got the Marketplace. And these are all three concepts that are critical to the cloud. Which is a subset of which? What's the hierarchy of these different platforms? Well, SoftLayer is definitely at the bottom line. Right? That's the engine which runs everything, which energizes, gives the CIO visibility, right? You notice how they talk about CIO and CSIO all the time, right? Something new like security is not every stick, but no CIO alone, no always CSL. And the marketplace is basically enabling the application to build with Linux. Right? And I agree with you, it's sort of risky on the Linux side. You know what a father at IBM, IBM would have to open source their pass, their platform as a service. Well, it's not, even, it's not even open source, they're doing a deal with Cloud Foundry. So, so they got, I think they're going to, the middleware is their angle on that. But again, I like, again, the developer story is good, the people are solid, so I think it's, it's not a fail in my, in my mind at all. The messaging is great, but you know, with the Red Hat Summit, you know, they have a very active community, multiple generations in the data center and in the enterprise with Linux, um, <laughs> and, and uh, op, you know, their open, open shift is 
it's, it's an interesting It's got it's traction, good. and it's, it's got legit traction. So that's one area. The other area I liked with uh, Steve Mills was he's very candid about the turf they're staking out. Clearly the cloud game is up, is there, is hardcore for them. And in the IBM flavor, enterprise cloud, they want to win the enterprise cloud. They clearly see Amazon. They see Amazon and his, his rhetoric against, uh, narrative and rhetoric against Amazon was interesting, saying that there's more links on soft layer than Amazon. Now, if you count EC2 links, then I think that number's skewed. So it's, you know, there's a little bit of gamification going. They have to dig into that. I didn't want to call them out on that, but you know, it's also hosting business versus you know, cloud, you parse the numbers. But what, what's your take on that? The Amazon soft layer kind of comparison. It's, it's fundamentally different, right? Amazon can't all shed everything, right? It's the retailer which moves its rack space depending on what is selling, what is not selling, and, and how you use this. Software gives you that visibility of your machine. And this is a conversation we have with CIOs and most part of the world that are more conservative. Knowing that I buy that machine, I can see that machine, I can even go and physically touch that machine if I really have to. And I can only dip slowly into any cloud virtualization, share everything pieces. Oh. That will help you learn. Paul, I got to say, my favorite interview, and I want to get your take on this, it was uh, Grady Bush who sat down with us and talked with us earlier today. Um, IBM fellow, walks on water with an IBM, obviously legend in the computer industry, just riveting conversation. I mean, it was really, we just getting started. I mean, it felt like we were like, you know, going to cruising altitude, and then he just walked away. So, I mean, what's your take on that conversation? Well, I, I mean, certainly he, uh, the Grady Booch interview gave us the best story of, of the two days, which is uh, there being in the hospital for open heart surgery, looking up, seeing the equipment that's going to be used to go into his chest and open his heart, and knowing that he knows the people who programmed that, that equipment, and they programmed it using a, a methodology that he invented. Uh, that, that, that's a remarkable story. But I think uh, uh, the fact that, that a Grady Booch can have a job at a company like IBM is a tribute to IBM. The fact that they can they employ people like that who don't have a hard revenue responsibility. He's not a P&L, he's just, he's just a genius and he's a legend and he's, and IBM, to its credit, finds a place for people like that all throughout its organization. And that's why they never lost their soul, in my opinion. You look at what HP and IBM, you know, IBM had a lot of reorganizations, a lot of pivots, so to speak, a lot of battleship that's turned this in way, but you know, for the most part, they kept their R&D culture. That's right. But there's an interesting analogy to the, remember the case methodology wars, where Booch was part of them with unified message, mm -hmm. language, email, something? Because it was all about this religious, right? You would use this one, or use this methodology, and different vendors were proprietary to them, couldn't transport and stuff. And then IBM, to their credit, unified the whole thing. Bring it together, rational, bring Grady Booch on board, unifying the methodology, and uh, did a great service to all of uh, software engineering. And maybe it's the same thing IBM can play around diversity of open stack. You've got to give IBM props, that's a great point. And earlier, we, Steve Mills made a similar reference around, it wasn't animosity, it was more of, hey, we helped make Intel a big business with the PC revolution. You know, where, what's in it for us, right? You know, where's our, you know, Help us out, because throw us a bone, or, you know. Did he say he helped Microsoft too? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, clearly, with the licensing deal with Gates. <laughs> but th this is the point, the unification story and what, what Gray's here. You know, IBM has some real good cultural, you know, industry goodwill. Do you agree, Paul? True no for IBM is the enterprise customer. And they will do what's right and where the money and the budget of the enterprise customers. And customers want compatibility. They don't want to have standard wars. They want to have investment protection. IBM is doing a good job of, of uh, defining that as their cloud strategy. They clearly are not going head to head with Amazon. It's a hybrid cloud strategy. They want to, to they see the enterprise uh, uh, customers, uh, that legacy as, as an asset, and it's something they want to build on. Of course, the risk of that is that Amazon right now is the pure play. It has all the momentum, it has all the buzz, and, and being tied to a legacy is not always the greatest thing in this industry. But from a practical revenue generating standpoint, it's pretty good. Okay guys, let's go down and wrap up here and uh, get your final thoughts on the event. Um, and let's just go by the numbers, kind of the key things that IBM was promoting and then our kind of scorecard on kind of where they, where they kind of played out. And new things that popped out of the woodwork that, that got your attention. Well, see, the, po the power systems thing was big on their messaging. Um, the big data story continues to be part of it. Blue mix, central to the operations, and the openness. You heard a lot of open, open, openness in their messaging. Um, yeah, and for the most part, that's pretty much it. Um, Watson? Well, Watson, yeah, continues. Watson? 
Kind of the Watson. A lot, a lot of news still to come out of Watson. I, I think uh, in many ways that is their is their ace in the hole. Or that that is their diamond. Any other thoughts? Well, what I missed is, which I think sets IBM apart from its vision, which is the idea of the API coming. Everybody else, either a pure name lock stops the platform now, or says I'm going to build like the Oracle TCP, I'm going to build you a monolithical application. And it's a clear differentiator on the IBM side, which you still have to build. Who makes this enabling part? They still have to figure out granularity. They'll remember web service, how granular do we have to be, how granular do we have these APIs have to be. But that sets them apart and they have to live on it. Yeah, I mean, I think I give them an A plus on messaging. I think they're on all the right fault lines on the tectonic shifts that we're seeing. You know, everyone I ask every, every guest interview, what's the, the game changing moment? Why is it so important? And, and almost consistently the answers were, you know, we're living in a time of fast change, data, you know, efficiency, experimental, you're going to be left behind. This is you know, the confluence of all these trends, these fault lines. So I think IBM is sitting on these fault lines. Now the question is, how fast can they cobble together the tooling from the machineries that they have built over the years, going back to the mainframe for the anniversary. A lot of parts out there, a lot of acquisitions, but, but so far the story, the story holds together well. You take the customer by the hand, right? That's the main challenge also. Oh, this was a WebSphere show. Often you do a WebSphere on the keynote. Day one, zero. Day two, two times. Well, they're tooling their conferences. It's the customer event and, you know. And there's 9,000 people here somehow I have to do something with WebSphere, right? So why is my way from my existing WebSphere version so and so into... Well, Bluemix is, web, Bluemix is WebSphere, yeah. WebSphere for the cloud. Right, right. But how do I get there, right? What can I reuse? What are my assets? What are things I can, can leverage? How do I call my old one for this space? Guys, really appreciate the commentary. Uh, this is going to be a wrap for us. Wanted to just do a shout out to uh, Matt, Greg, and Patrick here, doing a great job with the production here in the Cube team. And uh, we have another Cube team actually doing uh, simultaneous Cube up in San Francisco at ServiceNow. You guys have done a great job here. And also shout out to Bert Lattimore, who's uh, been doing a great job of live tweeting and helped moderate the crowd chat, which has been a huge success. Had a great crowd chat this time. Hopefully we'll get some more influencers and thought leaders in there for the next event. And of course, I want to thank Paul Gillen for being an amazing co-host on this trip. Uh, I thought the questions and the, and the cadence was fantastic. The guests were happy. And Holger, thank you for coming in on our wrap-up. Really appreciate it. Constellation Research. Uh, this is theCUBE. We are wrapping it up here at the IBM I Impact event here live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE. John Furrier with Paul Gillen uh, saying goodbye and we'll see you at our next event. And stay tuned. Let's look at angle.tv as we have continuous coverage of ServiceNow. And tomorrow we will be broadcasting and commentating on the Facebook Developer Conference in San Francisco. We're going to hear Mark Zuckerberg and all Facebook's um, developers and all their developer programs rolling out. So watch Look at Angle TV for that as well. Again, theCUBE is growing. Thanks to you watching and thanks to all of our friends in the industry. Thanks for watching. <laughs>